Thanks for joining us at the Business Growth Cafe, where each week we select from a menu of topics for a focused discussion with an industry expert to provide insights that can impact your business's growth with your host, Angelo Ponzi. I am Angelo Ponzi, your host here at the Business Growth Cafe, and thank you for joining us. Each week, we select from a menu of topics that can impact business growth to discuss with experts from a wide variety of disciplines. And today at the cafe, I'm excited to have Steve Pitchford, Senior Account Manager at Search Optimizers, on our show to discuss how SEO and other digital strategies can have an impact on your business growth. Steve, welcome. Thank you, Angelo. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. This is a really interesting topic. Um, you know, different times that I've talked to clients about this. Uh, sometimes they're enthusiastic. Sometimes they are, get a little skittish. So we're going to help sort all that out today as oh, yeah. we go forward. So to get things started, though, why don't we take a few minutes, tell the audience about your company and about you and some of the services you do to help drive business growth. Yeah, so Search Optimizers is a boutique uh, SEO agency, and we specialize in servicing small to medium-sized businesses and getting them ranked on the search engines in the organic search results. And our goal is to not only drive traffic, but also drive conversions that gets leads and sales into their funnel. Okay, fantastic. We're gonna talk a lot about that as we go forward. So one of the questions I, I always get when I'm talking to, to a customer, this is kind of a, a, a definition question. I hear, you know, what's an SEM, what's an SEO, what's a PPC? So let's uh, clarify for the audience the, the different acronyms, if you will, so they understand our conversation going forward. Yeah, great question. So SEM to me is uh, really about paid advertising. So it's either Google Ads or it's Display Network or it could be on Facebook. Um, so it's search engine marketing. Yeah, that that's referred to as PPC pay per click. That could also be referred to as pay per click. Okay. Right now, Display Ad is going to be more on impressions, and so it varies. Oh. But um, yeah, so pay per click would be part of that category. Okay, I, I understand. Okay. Uh, then you've got search engine optimization, which is really about optimizing your website. Um, for user experience, as well as spreading the news through through other channels so that you get links back to your website. So when you refer to other channels, you're talking about uh, social uh, posts or, or blogging and, and posts on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all the other idioms of those kinds of uh, channels? Yeah, it's grown a lot. You know, writing articles, getting a post on the HuffPost or other places um, are great ways to, to get signals coming back to your website that Google recognizes and gives you authority. Okay, so they're the behemoth. They're the ones we really need to please uh, when it comes to search. Now, you use the term backlink. So I'm, let's say I'm writing a blog and I post it on LinkedIn or I post it on my website. H how does that get me links back that Google recognizes? So every website has something called domain authority. And so it's based on a lot of different signals that Google looks at. But um, the local shoe shiner is going to have a lot lower <laughs> domain authority than, okay. let's say, the Wall Street Journal. So the stronger the domain authority of those that are linking into your website, in other words, they're, they have a link on your website driving back to your website traffic, the better that signal. And that's a ranking signal that Google looks at. Another, another, in fact, uh, I think content would be the number one signal. Um, links would be the second, those links coming into your website, how strong they are, and the third would be content. So those are, I'm sorry, uh, rank brain. So those are the top three. All right, so content being stuff I'm pushing out, for example, but the backlinks then are really, if I, I'm, I say I'm a guest blogger on, on your website, and those links would link back to my website, if that's what I'm understanding. Exactly. Okay, so uh, SEO you mentioned is, is organic, and, and it's like branding, it takes time to really take effect. And one of the things I find a lot of times is when we're dealing with small to medium sized business, and I, I and forgive me audience for saying this, it's patience, right? It's about patience building the brand, it's about patience to have things work. So what's a good time frame if I'm gonna counsel one of my clients and say, look at, we're gonna run some SEO, but you've gotta give it X amount of time for it really start to, to generate what it's supposed to be doing. And I think that depends on each situation, it's how much content you're going to be generating over time. It's how aggressive you are with your on-page optimization techniques. 
Um, and it's also about the competition and how strong they are, how entrenched they are in the marketplace. But I would say, generally speaking, uh, you should start to see ranking improvements in one to two months. Okay. Um, you should start to see page one positions in two to four months. And you should start to see ROI somewhere between six to 12 months. Okay. So, so really, and I talk about patience then, this is a this is uh, the long game, if you will. If you're looking for a quick hit in, in fast conversions using organic, um, it's not going to happen that quickly. Exactly. Unless you've got, you know, unless it's a really unusual situation, I would say if you want a campaign, if you want kick, quick results, then go with SEM to start. Okay. All right. So is there, when people are setting goals for SEO, is there some guidelines that sh they should be really looking at? And especially when you think about how's it going to drive business for them, uh, as opposed to unrealistic goals that sometimes are set and they're not met in that short time frame that I'm talking about, and they bail on the program too quickly. Exactly. And so uh, e-commerce would be probably the easiest way to measure because your sales are right there on the website. Um, but most, most of the websites that we're working with are lead generation sites. So if you can't track to sale, what do you measure? Um, we like to measure closest to sale. So conversions of those call to actions that are on your site would probably be the best thing to focus on. But prior to that, you've got rankings that are going to drive traffic. And then you've got your behavior metrics that you, you need to be focused on as well. But conversions would be um, the thing to measure, um, I would say, with the highest priority. And those are really, those are set up in your Google Analytics, right? So whatever your measurements and your uh, uh, milestones of conversion mean to you, you're setting those goals up right within your program. Is that correct? Exactly. So the standard Google Analytics, you know, coming out of the box doesn't really, you know, know what your custom call to actions are. You might want to measure, for instance, if you have a video on your homepage, you want to might want to measure how many times that's played or uh, how many times people fill out a contact form or a e you know, email sign up. So those are, those are actions and engagements that signal that a visitor is closer to you know, engaging with you. Okay, so when I'm working on a, a campaign for a client marketing campaign, we're always setting objectives, things we, we can measure. And the same thing with SEO, we wanna set those realistic objectives that, that can be measured. So really, when I think about a return on investment from an SEO uh, program, it's really about whatever those m measurements happen to be, right? If I, like you're just saying with video, uh, if I said I want to, you know, my goal is to get 10 people, for example, to watch this video, and I get 12 or 13 or 14, then I've exceeded that expectation and that goal, which can help me measure the success of it. Exactly. I would suggest you start out with some benchmarks on each call to action and e each goal that you have. And you can actually even put a value on those in Google Analytics and it'll start to accumulate your your value per uh, per conversion. Okay. Okay. Now, a lot of times uh, when people are looking for benchmarking, right? So for, for those of you listening, of course, how do you measure? What are the benchmarks that you really need to set? A lot of times you can forgive the word Google, uh, standard benchmarks within your industry. So are there standardization um, for, like I said, for an SEO, or is it really dependent on the organization and the marketplace and, and kind of so there's really no something that I could use from historical purposes to set some benchmarks? Yeah, I, I think that's it. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of variables involved. Um, I know that Google Analytics does have some industry uh, measurements and benchmarks that you can measure by, and it'll actually uh, let you know, for instance, if you're behind on email marketing or if you're behind on pay-per-click. Christopher Penn has some great information on that that you might want to check out. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, you've known me for a while, and I'm a, I'm a huge believer and supporter of integrated marketing. I, I you know, I don't believe in silver bullets unless we're killing werewolves or uh, I want to play Lone Ranger on a given <laughs> Saturday night. But... If I look at integrated marketing, what is really the, is there a combination of tactics that you see with SEO that really work the best to help uh, bring this program home? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look back at, you know, the monster in the market is Google, right? And so 95% of traffic is, is flowing through organic results. And what the magnet is right there for what Google wants to see is that you're answering those questions at night that are, are keeping people up in their industry. 
Um, and we've become, uh, you know, Google has now really shifted to uh, voice search and mobile search. And so we have to shift our content towards that natural language. Um, but I would say at the top of the heap is really building great content, knowing who your audience is, and really servicing them. Google is looking at brands to publish and provide information to their audience. So you, you mentioned know your audience, and I always gravitate to, to buyer personas and really understanding the customer journey. And so that, I, I'm assuming from your perspective, and I know it is from mine, this is extremely important for businesses that take the time to really understand who they're talking to and what their customer is and how they consume information. Um, and so there I think that whether it's video or content really kind of depends ultimately on who your target audience is and as content being written content, let's say, versus video. Um, so really you have to understand the demographics, the psychographics, behaviors of, of your target audience to make sure you're delivering it correctly. So then, of course, you're getting rewarded by Google. Absolutely. This is what we see as a growing uh, part of the marketing space is is you know customer experience, customer journey mapping, uh, really bringing uh, your employees into that whole thing, and um, you know, really reshaping your culture around uh, the customer experience, and really focusing on their needs. Okay, you mentioned voice search. Can you can you explain a little bit more about that? I mean, I know we've got all the uh, devices at home and Alexa and and whatever the other ones are now. There's a ton of them, Cortona and and those kinds of things. So how is voice playing a role in, in search? Well, it's playing a huge role. Gro uh, voice search is growing exponentially. And obviously, we've, we've had Siri. We've been able to do voice search with our phones for a while. But now the boxes are really starting to uh, grow that type of search. And what it's doing is it's elongating the queries. And so the boxes are talking to us like they're, they're people. Right. And so we're talking back to them like they under, <laughs> really understand us, you know. And so a lot of who, what, why, when, and where questions are being asked. And so these queries are getting a lot longer. And you might look like in a, a simple query about an industry um, and, and see what Google comes up with called an instant answer. It's right on the landing page of the search engine results page. And then it gives you a list of other questions that the audience is asking. And most are very simple. They can be answered in about four lines of copy. But that's the shift we see. It's more conversational copy and longer tail phrases that are being searched. So, so when you're saying that we need to answer the questions that are being asked, so really it's, it's understanding what those questions are so we can help make sure that the copy we're putting on our website and in our content are answering those questions. Exactly, and Google is actually telling us that. In, like, after, under the instant answer, they have something called people also ask. If you click one of those questions, you actually get you know, four questions. You click another one, you get five, you get six. That'll give you tons of questions that your audience is asking about, and it's a great FAQ strategy. Yeah, that's, that's actually really interesting, because I mean, if you take that approach and understand those questions, that really is a indication of what kind of content you should be really generating on your, your programs and your sites. It is, and uh, a lot of people will get fearful of instant answers. Well, they're not going to come to my website, not going to click the link. I found that to be not true. What happens is that you get a lot more traffic coming on those specific landing pages, and now all of a sudden you can start to measure with an organic landing page report um, what are your blog posts that are really, really winning, and is, is that FAQ strategy working? Okay. Wow, that's, uh, that, that's, that's really interesting. Let's talk a little bit about paid. All right, so we're going to shift a little from SEO, but let's talk about PPC. And, and you know, it isn't a one or the other. It's, it seems to me that it, they should be a combination of, totally. of programs going on. So is there a certain weighting, any advice when it comes to PPC that you can give the audience that they, they really need to pay attention, especially if they've never done it before? Or those, and I've had some situations where we've launched PPC campaigns, again, back to this word I'm using is patience, that it didn't get a chance to really develop before the plug was pulled. So what some guidance can you give when it comes to PPC campaigns? Yeah, PPC campaigns also need to be optimized. It's really hard to predict how uh, a particular ad is going to land and what kind of conversions they're going to get. So there's a lot of testing that goes on in the beginning of a PPC campaign. Um, if you're not 
really expert at it internally, you might want to think about hiring a, a consultant. Um, the consultants require a certain minimum budget typically on, on how much ad spend, and then they're going to charge for a consulting fee on top of that. So you're probably going to need to have bare minimum a $1,000 budget, most likely more like 2500 to get a PPC uh, campaign going. Um, and um, then it's just a matter of you know, building landing pages that match to ads very tightly. So some people like to drive PPC traffic to their home page, and I would highly recommend that they not do that, that they would build ads that are very specific to the landing page, and the landing page has to have all those elements that are going to actually convert to, um, to an action. Yeah, that's a great point. I've seen too many times where you know, we're recommending individual landing pages based on whatever the ad happens to be or the concept, and, and folks wanted to send it back to the website. And to me, when they get back to the website, it kind of really gets lost, and we're not able to deliver a very specific message based on whatever that ad happened to have been. And if I'm hearing you correctly, you also believe that the landing pages for each individual campaign should be a, a, a definite uh, approach. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, building lots of different ads uh, that have matching uh, landing pages is a critical component to a successful PPC campaign. Okay, great. So you mentioned domain authority and things like that, and, and certainly the bigger companies are going to have bigger domain authorities. And so if I've got a small to medium-sized business, I mean, what are, what are some of the strategies that uh, they might use, our listeners might use to compete against maybe larger companies within the same vertical? Well, I think I go back to content and serving the audience. And what I would suggest is that as you, you know, try to determine what are you going to write about, do some keyword research. Um, see what, what are those queries that people are using to find your product or service. You can go to Google Ad Planner. There's some free tools out there. Neil Patel has one, Uber Suggest. And do that keyword research first. Um, and then go and do some competitive research on how that particular type of content is being addressed uh, on page one of Google. And then go out and try to write a better article than the best one. Look at you know, what's in the top three on that topic and just go out and do some more research and write the absolute best article. It's tough to do, especially for small business, because you know, most small businessmen are stretched pretty thin. Um, uh, what I see is a, a passion to write at 10 o'clock at night is really what's <laughs> needed. So it's tough, but that's how you compete. Okay. The, um, you know, I, I found this quote, I believe the guy's name is Len Schlesinger, and it says, failure doesn't mean the game is over. It means try again with experience. So if your SEO campaign does indeed fail, then it's time to get over your disappointment and work out what went wrong in order to do a better job next time. So in your opinion, why do most SEO campaigns, I'm, I'm very broad, why do SEO, not the most, but why do SEO campaigns fail? Well, I think part of it is, you know, they're not, they don't really understand the, the audience and how they're searching. Uh, they might be going after keywords that are too aggressive for their domain authority. For instance, if you have a domain authority of 10 and your competitor has a domain authority of 50, you can't go after the same keywords as they have. And there's, there's keyword difficulty ratings for each keyword. So you really have to dial that in to keywords that you can compete on. Um, so missing the audience uh, and how they're searching, and then the way your content is built, and then just helping Google understand through technical on-page um, or how, you know, what that content is about. Because uh, that's a difficult challenge for Google to really understand. So we have to tag that content. Uh, to make it easy for them to understand. And then I, I would say sharing that content um, with your audience, where they live. Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Or do you need to write articles to their vertical publications? So those are the big pieces that typically aren't addressed in a failed campaign. Okay. Some of the notes I had here was in, in looking at whether the goals were out. Um, I, I'll read these off, and you pick one or two if you want to comment on them. So why, why campaigns might fail is the goals that set were, were um, beyond without any really expectations, budget, uh, a set it and forget it mentality, which I think is probably pretty prevalent. Hey, I did this, it should be working, but it's not. 
uh, no tracking or certainly not looking at their analytics, a bad website and speed, uh, responsiveness we've talked about before, uh, too narrow of a niche, not building links, content is performing. So is there, is there any one or two of those I just read off that you would go, yeah, these are things I see all the time? Well, I would say that the benchmarking up front on goals is super important because that's what's going to set expectations and that's what's going to define success. And because most businesses don't really look at their website as something that's going to generate goal conversions, it's more about them and pushing out their information about their product or service. It's kind of a mind shift that needs to take place up front so that we know how to measure success. I see that's that's probably the biggest one I see. Um, others, I think mobile friendliness is pretty common today. After mobile get on a couple of years ago, you know that that became pretty well known that you have to be mobile friendly. But I think pretty pervasively, I see today we still don't have fast mobile sites, and I see really high bounce rates on sites that don't load quickly, three seconds or less. That's what the expectation is. Um, so uh, I, I think it's tough for web designers to really get all the technical aspects required to build a fast mobile site. That's really kind of a specialty in uh, web design circles that I've seen. So I think that's another thing, having a fast mobile site is super critical today. Okay. Um, I think we're, we're probably about three, three minutes or so left. Um, I can't believe it's uh, that much time has gone by already. So let me ask, uh, I got a few more questions. So give our, give our listeners some advice. What are three or five tips they can, you know, put into effect if this is their first time thinking about SEO or maybe they're already in it and they haven't been very successful. What are some guidelines or tips you can give the audience about setting up an effective program? You know, I really think it starts with content. Um, you, you really need to know your audience and write to, to what's important to them. And that, that uh, FAQ strategy I mentioned, I think is great for small business because they lack the time to write long articles. They have to write it at night. Uh, the FAQ strategy for, for the instant answer is a four line answer. And Google's giving you the question. So it's a very simple uh, strategy to implement and you're right in, in alignment with what Google is looking for, um, for, for serving an audience. Okay. So we're obviously both s small business people. And so I, I ask this question to all my guests. So when you think about growing your business, you know, what keeps you up at night? What are some of those obstacles and barriers? But what keeps you up at night thinking about your business? You know, how do we message to our audience in a way that, you know, it's not sales oriented, it's educational, uh, it helps them understand, you know, the whole journey that they're going through, um, and, and yet um, it, it allows us also to, to, you know, differentiate our services from everybody else. So that, that pre-sales messaging is really how we, we continue to work on. Okay, that keeps you up thinking about it all night, huh? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. All right, all right. So, um, Steve, uh, thank you so much. I uh, can't believe 25 minutes or so has or almost, almost by really fast. So uh, why don't you tell our listeners how they can get a hold of you and, and all that good stuff? Well, I'm on LinkedIn, Steve Pitchford, um, and you can go to our website, searchoptimizers.com. And uh, my email is steve.pitchford at searchoptimizers.com. All right. Well, thank you so much. Spell it. Oh, uh, why don't you go ahead and spell it out? Our engineer is talking to us on the side. <laughs> Steve, S-T-E-V-E, dot Pitchford, P as in Paul, I-T-C-H-F-O-R-D, at searchoptimizers.com. At searchoptimizers.com, audience. Anyway, thank you again for joining us at the cafe today. You can find out more about me and read my blogs at the Ponzi Group, theponzigroup.com, or connect with me on LinkedIn is the best way. You can subscribe to our show at the Business Growth Cafe, and yes, I am now on iTunes as well, and Google Play. We are knocking them down left and right. We will be global before we know it. Thank you again, and join me next week at the Business Growth Cafe. Thank you for listening to today's discussion at the Business Growth Cafe with your host, Angelo Ponzi. 
Take a moment to subscribe to this podcast and visit our website at www.businessgrowthcafe.com. Read Angelo Ponzi's blogs at www.theponzigroup.com. Are you ready to tap into the power of social media to promote your business? It's easy to get social with Turn Up the Volume, the award-winning social media marketing professionals who know how to